This is insane. How to avoid getting eaten by a wild moose? Hi here, Philip there. I was having a walk in the Albanian mountains when I suddenly realized it's absolutely necessary to review some portfolio website. Number 5. A portfolio website where its creator is hanging from a lamppost. In this portfolio by Beth Williams we explore what appears to be a 3D representation of a world the author lives in. There are actually quite a few things that you discover, like uh, for instance that there is a garage with buckets and a screen with the instructable side on it. Or for instance this character who is doing some weird gestures in front of a mailbox. And there are a few other things which I will show you later in the video when the time is right. The time is right. The next discovery you make uh -huh. The next discovery you make is that this is in fact a VR website. Unfortunately, I'm constantly on the road and do not have a VR set with me. I did pack a broken frying pan, which I now think was a bit of a rushed decision. And then you discover a man in a peculiar situation. All you need to do is type this in the address bar. How to avoid getting eaten by a wild moose. And press enter. It's a 404 page. I wonder if Brett has Google Analytics on his website and will later see all these weird URLs that I've been typing in. Add turtles. <laughs> you will see later. Why do you need a 404 page though on this website? This 404 page is basically an easter egg in the shape of a man. Just like the site from the number 4 in this video that makes a dumb person like me feel like he is the smartest person in the world. This site makes a bluntly inattentive person, like also me, feel like he is a Marco Polo. And discovery number 4. Uh, when you zoom all the way out, you see the stars. At least that's what I think they are. Could also be a cloud of dendruff. Always a possibility. The butt. I'd maybe expand on the slight weirdness of this world. Uh, like, for instance, you could include a character on one of the floors. As some form of a grandmother usually works quite well. That could, for instance, say, where are the walls? I also really like the idea of the universe when you zoom out, which makes me think not putting this world on top of three turtles is a major missed opportunity. Number 4. A portfolio website that has a picture of someone holding their nose. This is a portfolio website by Nam Hai. It welcomes you with the best ever functionality walkthrough that there is. I usually hate those a lot, but look at this. Try to drag things around. Perfect. And that's it. And you instantly know what to do now. You're even proud of yourself that you got it. Uh, like a small puzzle for a dumb person. And now all you want to do is to basically keep using this newly gained knowledge, which is quite satisfying. It is also satisfying because of all of this visual feedback, I think. All these small UI elements that respond to you interacting with it. Those micro interactions are in fact on every website from this video. A trend of 2022. Not really a trend. I'll tell you why a bit later. As my grandma would say, the devil is in the details. Or was it the devil is in the dentals? One other thing that I've noticed right away is that this site does not have a custom domain name. You know how they say a custom domain name will make you seem more earnest, more professional. A custom domain name is important for strengthening a brand name, building credibility and trust. No it isn't. F*** you. Here is the site with a custom domain name and here is the site without. I create mem... I create mem... I create mem... I create mem... It's kind of hard to understand what its author is specializing. The other thing that's missing here is some kind of a statement. I create impressive digital art that helps you realize your life is a drag. The website doesn't work on mobile. Which is actually weird because this kind of draggable UI is perfect for mobile. Number 3. A creative portfolio website which actually... Goodbye. This is a website by Hisami Kurita, who is based in Japan and who is a front-end developer. Here he says, In the summer of 22 I started programming. <clears throat> okay, thank you very much. This was very useful. Goodbye. I always suspected it, but now, finally, there is the proof. All Japanese are basically Okay, let's continue and I will just convince myself he means the summer of 1922. Micro-interactions again. It could be a trend. But I think 
it isn't. I have a feeling that this already existed long before HTML5 and CSS3. It was called a Flash website back then. Because back then HTML and CSS would not allow for such animational and interactive freedom. But Macromedia Flash did. So every cool and creative person back then would use it to build websites instead. All of this interactive stuff has been around for ages. And I think it's gonna stay around for ages too. The butt. If you look at road signs, especially in countries with a great design history, like Great Britain, you would see that all text on public navigation there is set in sentence case. And that is because you make it uh, and that is because you want to make it as quickly readable as possible. Especially on highways and especially in Great Britain, where a person going 90 miles per hour has very little time to read the sign before he drives off the island. If you look closely at the typography of the site, you would see that all text here is all caps. When it's all caps, there is very little contrast between the letters, because all the letters are basically the same height. Your eye has much more trouble telling letters apart, and therefore reading the overall shape of the word. Number 2. A portfolio website where Steve Carell threatens you when you try to leave multiple times. This portfolio by Peter Bruegel, <coughs> sorry, this portfolio by Daniel Spetsek is the most functional out of all portfolios that I've looked at, in a way that it satisfies the main requirement of a portfolio website the best, which is basically attracting prospective clients and making it easy for them to commission new work. It's got this original UI that is quite amusing and memorable, and it's not something that you've seen before. It quite successfully showcases the advanced design and development skins, the advanced design and development skin, the advanced design and development skins. So, before you've looked at any of the works in the portfolio itself, you can already see that Peter, uh, that Daniel is kind of familiar with design principles, know his way around typography and hierarchy, and has a good eye for color. Additionally, Daniel successfully shows off his WebGL skills with a banana. And trust me, this is something that very few people can say. This is what other portfolios in this video are missing. This website is catering for Clint. For client, this portfolio is showcased in a very user-friendly manner, which allows you as a prospective client to quickly scan through projects with very little effort. Look at this. This is what's known in the world of marketing as a building of trust section. It shows you all the awards Daniel has won. And then, right after doing that, it reinforces the feeling that you are in good professional hands by showing you the development process. It then goes on and presents you with an FAQ section, in case you still have questions. And after that all, if you still have doubts, it shows you a WebGL banana and the video of a lady chased in circles by a wild goose. But actually, in reality, the FAQ section is not what you think it is. And if you try to leave, the site will threaten you with Steve Carell. Daniel actually successfully made me hate the nicest person in Hollywood with his website. Because as I was writing my notes for this video, and I was going back and forth from Daniel's website to Google Docs, this would make the site lose focus, which would summon Steve, who I would have to get rid of every time I'd come back to look at more stuff. And finally, number one, a portfolio website where an LED RGB screen is faked by CSS. This portfolio is by Mohamed Amin Baladi, a full-stack web developer based in Aysuera, Morocco. A beautiful city, by the way. Had a horrible accident there, though. A cat peed on my head. <coughs> anyway, this is insane. So why is this website so different? Well, I have no idea. Mohammed does not give us any clues as to why he chose this specific visual style. But I can still make an <laughs> But I can still make an uneducated guess why this looks the way it does. For example, it could have said on the website. I aspire to provide the crispiest crocodile droppings on the mar- <clears throat> Damn it! I aspire to create interactive experiences that makes machines feel human. 
or Cyberpunk 2077, 2077, 20, 2077, <laughs> Cyberpunk 2077, or Blade Runner. Mohammed just likes this particular visual style. And this is also okay, because it's a part of his personality, and this is his personal portfolio website. Now, about how it's made. Just like the site number 5, it's 3JS. But there is one other clever thing here that's been done, which I like. And it has nothing to do with 3JS. In fact, it's just pure CSS. It's this imitation of screen pixels. And this is pure CSS. What it actually is, is a semi-transparent overlay. That's a combination of gradients repeated as a background image. The butt. That's what happens when you have your own music playing on your device and then navigate to a website that also has music on the background. I think this website could easily be an NFT. I mean, everything these days could easily be an NFT. But this website really looks like a piece of digital art. In fact, there is one website that is actually an NFT. And it's featured in one of my other videos. It is more of a UX piece of art rather than a digital piece of art. You can check it out here or here. I think here. But before you do, subscribe and hit the bell. Because it helps saving all of those confused cows across the world. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon.